So this season we are very happy to present these wonderful examples of Fabergé clocks at the best um, you can find on the market at the moment. And they do really highlight the quality of Fabergé and different enameling techniques that Fabergé firm was so famous for. Uh, we have the wonderful blue clock with gold foiling underneath the enameling, which is a very difficult technique. The pink clock painted on enamel and the wonderful lime green clock decorated with gold and diamonds of a very unusual uh, kidney shape. So really nice uh, clocks, uh, wonderful and as I said the best on the market. So this season we are thrilled to offer a masterpiece and a really rare find by Petra Watkin. Uh, he's still alive, his lilac, um, which is essentially has everything the still lives that one would want from Petra Watkin. The still life has his magnificent and innovative use of spherical perspective where he um, shows the viewer a view from above where he steps away from the traditional Italian line and perspective and challenges the viewer the way we look at the objects. And the other thing to mention, perhaps he's powerful use of pure primary colours and Peter Watkin was particularly known for his um, series about the three colours spectrum and here we have the magnificent blue complemented by red and yellow and these are the most recognisable Peter Watkins colours as such perhaps you know the first thing to remember would be his basin of the red horse and um, essentially he teached his three colour spectrum system in the Academy of Arts in Svansava School and that's what we have in the present still life. And the other thing of interest would be his mastery of optical illusions. So when you look at the inkwell, how it is painted and you can see how the artist carefully started how the light travels through the glass, through the object, how it refracts and drops a shadow on this beautiful blue background and when we have a closer look uh, at the still life what catches our eye perhaps is this curious inscription in the lower right corner which actually refers to his time in Cocktail and Crimea and we suspected that there would be another image under this still life and for that reason we've done an infrared um, photography of the lot just to reveal what's underneath and we found this intriguing composition of Madonna with a child and as we know this subject was of particular importance to the artist and he um, developed it from his even early days in St. Petersburg and his Mayolica panel for the Vrieden Institute and what's interesting and we should bear in mind that perhaps this subject of Madonna and Child in the largely artist society of the Soviet Union in the 1920s perhaps was not um, the most um, appealing subject let's say to work on and hence why the artist has reworked the canvas uh, to show this beautiful still life and this image might seem to be familiar and the reason why is that um, there is another version of the still life and it's in the collection of the state Russian museum in St. Petersburg and our version is was painted four years earlier so that's essentially the first version of this famous still life and when we look at it um, the St. Petersburg museum canvas also has this blue background and we know from the memoirs of the artist's daughter that that is the picture of Watkins working desk and she remembers the blue fabric of the desk and then we have a closer look at the magazine and that's a French um, magazine about art by monthly publication called L'Art Vivant and in 1925 Peter Watkins travelled to France um, and he gave an interview about his um, teaching methods in the Academy of Art about his innovations in art and um, evidently since then the artist retained the copy of the magazine and it would be fair to say that that's
the loss really thing to mention, that would be the fantastic prominence which actually tells us the story of the cultural exchange between the Soviet Russia and Italy and the painting was given by the director of the Pushkin Museum, um, Boris Ternovets, to a, an Italian art critic and publisher, Giovanni Shivilla, and since then it remained in the same family, and we are honoured to offer it um, at auction for the first time in its history.